We're talking about odds and probability today, 4.3. Odds and probability. So we've talked about uh, experimental probability, right, in 4.1. We talked about theoretical probability in 4.2. And so the difference between experimental and theoretical, uh, experimental is based on past events, so we can predict or uh, talk about the probability of something happening based on what's already happened in the past. That's experimental probability. Theoretical probability is... Uh, probability based on the nature of the situation. So if we're flipping a coin, theoretically we should get, uh, however many times we do it, half the time should be heads, half the time should be tails. That's what it should be theoretically. Now that doesn't always happen in reality, but the more times you would perform uh, an activity or experiment like that, the more times the experimental probability, uh, or the closer the experimental probability would get to the theoretical, the more times you do it. So now we're talking about something a little bit different. We're talking about odds now. So you may have heard someone say the odds of our team winning the hockey game are 3 to 1. So 3 to 1 odds or 2 to 1 odds or 42 to 1, whatever it may be, those are odds. And it's a little different than probability. It's a little bit different. And this is how it works. The odds are a ratio that compares a desired event, so that would be the odds of maybe something happening compared to the number of undesired events or vice versa. So the odds of our team winning would be out of, now this is the thing, the total would be three and one, so the total is four. When you say the odds are three to one, that means out of four, we would win three times and lose once. So the odds of winning would be three wins versus one loss. It's not one out of three, it's not three times as many necessarily, it's, it's not always, it's three out of the total. So um, the odds of, um, uh, well, let's just let's keep re reading here. Odds are similar to probability, but compare the number of desired events to undesired, not the number of desired events to the total, okay? So probability would be, we're probably gonna win. The chances of us winning, the probability of us winning would be three out of four. That's probability. The odds would be three to one. Three wins versus one loss. That's, that's, that's what it would be, three to one. Not three out of four, okay? That's the difference. So you can have odds in favor or odds against. So the odds against the team winning, right? The odds against would be one to three. So that means there would be one failed event or undesirable event versus three desired events. So the odds against would be negative to positive. So here's an example. If you roll a standard six-sided die, what are the odds in favor of rolling a six? In favor. So what you do is you compare as a ratio or in words, you compare the number of desired events. So, so as rolling a six, that's one option for rolling a six compared to the number of options that are not a six. So not the total, but the number of options that are not a six. So it'd be um, one to five. The odds in favor are one to five. And you can actually, I'll just zoom in here. You can write it like this with a... Sure went to the high school office. Sure went so to you, the can, school you can write it as one colon five, one to five that way, or you can just write it in words, one, two, five. Don't write it as a ratio, like one over five, because that is probability. That means one out of a total of five. That's what that indicates. Okay, what are the odds against rolling a six? Well, the odds against would be what are the negative, uh, the, uh, you know, the, the not a six options, right? There would be five of them to one positive. So five to one odds against rolling a six. Okay. So let's do a question here um, from scratch. So build your skills number one. Let's take a look at this. I uh, guess that's good enough. So a card is chosen at random from a standard deck of playing cards. What are the odds in favor of being a diamond? So again, how many suits do we have in a deck of cards? Four, right. And how many um, suits are diamonds? One, right. So excuse the color, but we have diamonds and we have hearts and we have spades-ish like this and we have the, the clubs right okay those are the four suits two of them are red but whatever so we have one out of a total of four or 
the odds in favor of a card being a diamond would be one to what? What do I put here? One to three. One to three. Now remember, probability is one out of four. That's the probability. The odds in favor are one to three. So there's one chance of getting the desired event and three chances of the non-desired event, okay? So what are the odds now against being a queen? So that's the negative. The odds against being a queen, okay? Well, for each, every suit is the same, so we could just consider how many queens are there in, in uh, well, let's say the whole deck. How many queens are there in the whole deck? How many queens are there in a whole deck of cards? There's one per suit. So there are four right so that's the positive so let's write that one second what's the negative how many cards would not be a queen in the entire deck okay 52 minus 4 48 okay let's see if that works the odds against being a queen well there are 48 cards that are not a queen versus 4 that are notice we did not use 52 in here anywhere probability would say 48 out of 52 would be the probability of not getting a queen. But the odds would be 48 to not getting a queen versus 4 of getting a queen. Okay? So 48 to 4. Now could we reduce that? We probably should. If you have a ratio like this uh, or odds like this, you should reduce it. So I could divide both of these by 4, couldn't I? So it would be 12 to one. That would be your reduced odds and you probably should write every odds that you can as reduced odds like that. Alright, so let's move to example two here now on page 165. Another thing we're going to have to do in this section is again talking about odds, but watch how this example looks a little bit different than the other examples. So this one says Alexa has a small gardening business in Victoria. She planted 14 daffodil bulbs in a client's garden. Now notice this looks like a total amount. See that? Total amount. In the spring, um, in the spring, 12 bulbs flowered. Okay. So right away, we can see that this 14 is all of them. 12 would be the ones that flowered. Okay, what does the question say? Based on these statistics, what are the odds in favor of a bulb Alexa planted in another garden flowering? So what are the odds in favor? Well, we want favorable number of times versus unfavorable number of times, right? So the favorable number of times would be the 12 bulbs. Does that look good? Is that understood? And then over here, versus, this would be the number of bulbs that didn't pop up or didn't um, uh, come up in the spring. And so remember, 14 is not the number that goes here. But what is the number that goes here in the second one? All right, so two goes there because those are the ones that did not come up. Okay, so there you go. So look down here for the solution. Again, 12 came up, two did not. So odds in favor would be 12 to 2. Or reduced would be 6 to 1. Okay. This one says, uh, talk about the probability now. Oh, okay, well, the probability, that's easy. Probability would be uh, uh, a planted bulb will flower. Well, that's successful number of times observed versus the total number of times. So this is where we go 12 out of 14. Okay, or what is that? Six out of seven. You could write that as a decimal or a percent as well. So here you go. Okay, so just in summary, the difference between odds and probability. Probability is the number of desired events out of or divided by the total. That's probability. Odds in favor would be the desired events compared to or in a ratio with the undesired. Desired versus undesired. Okay? Or positive versus negative uh, results. Yes? Probability. All right, so we're going to skip ahead just for the lesson portion here to example three. So if you can look at example three with me, this is what example three says. 
An animal shelter is holding a raffle to raise money to build a new room on their existing building. They are offering a variety of prizes, including a free vet visit and bags of pet food. In total, okay, look at this. In total, there were 4,600 tickets sold. The odds in favor of winning a prize would be 3 to 227, okay? So this is expressed not in probability, but in odds, which means that there are three chances of winning, three chances of winning, or three prizes, right? Winning. And then 227 chances of not winning. Does everyone see that? So if these represent prizes, three prizes, 227 not prizes, or not events, what can we say would be the uh, total here? Or what is the probability of winning a prize? So three probability is the number of desired events out of the what? What goes down here? What goes down there? Probability, desired events divided by what? Undesired events or total, which one? Probability is total, yes. So given this information, this is these are odds, right? So this is yes, and this is no. So what's the total? Anybody? What's the total we're talking about here? Three yeses, 227 noes. What are the total events? Okay, the total events would be all the yeses, the yes, the good ones, and the, and the noes, the negative ones, right? So we add them, yeah. So 330, sorry, 230, 230, all right? So does everyone see that? Chances of winning versus chances of not winning, so the total chances that we're talking about would be this, equals 230. All right, so the probability of winning the prize would be this right here, 2 out of uh, sorry, 3 out of 230, which as a percent, eight, not very good. 3 divided by 230 would be 1.3%. Um, 0.013 or 1.3%, okay? Now, this is an example, so we should have the solution here, and there you go, 3 out of 230. Now, this is where it gets a little tricky. B, how many prize-winning tickets are there? Okay, well... Here's the odds. We've got probability. So there's 1.3% chance of winning. That is 1.3% of all of the total would be winners. We've got the total number of tickets here. So guess what? We use the percent, the winning percent. For me next time. The winning percent. Can you give me money? Yeah, no chance. Okay. <laughs> Here's the number of tickets, and here's the percent that, that you win. So 1.3% uh, out of a total, of a total. How do you find the number of tickets that would represent this 1.3%? What would you have to do? How do you find 1.3% of something? Anybody? No? Don't know how to find 1.3% of something? You need to remember this. Percent in decimal form times the number. Right? 1.3% is 0 0.013, the decimal, times the number. That's how we find out how many tickets are 1.3%. Alright, so B, here's the solution for this example. Right here. So we've got... Uh, they've set it up as a proportion. You can do it this way as well. Notice that they've multiplied here 4,600 times the decimal form of the percent. That's what this is, 3 out of 230. That's how we got it. So 4,600 times 0 0.013 is going to give you what? Times 0 0.013. 59.8. Now, if we use the entire decimal there, that would be pretty much 60, right? So that equals approximately 60. 
So your answer for that would be there would be 60 winning prizes out of 4,600. Question? Yes? No? Okay. Does anybody have any questions with that? This is, this is now taking the idea of odds and connecting it with probability. Okay? All right? So now, what I want you to do is today you are to... Um, I want you to get to number nine done. All right? So I've done a couple questions with you, so you have basically seven more questions to do. Seven questions to do for the bulk of this class here now. Okay? And then tomorrow we'll focus on practice your new skills. So what's that? That'll be Thursday. Okay? Got it? And if you're not done up to this point, I want you to make sure you're done everything up to this page here, up to this point before tomorrow.